Welcome back guys. In this episode, we're gonna overhaul this engine. Of course, I don't do anything on this truck without cracking these two books open. The Model A Judging Standards and this great book that Mick Isabel put out on all the hardware. There's not one nut, bolt, or washer that goes on this truck or engine without checking it out in these books. And to refresh your memory, this truck looked good from a long ways away, but when you really got into it, it had so many problems, I didn't know where to start. So I just had to do the whole doggone thing. So to get from this point of where I bought the truck to get to this point of where it is today, Here's what it took. When Kevin did the machine work on this, he started out by putting valve seats in it. It really didn't need them, but why not? A valve seat is about six bucks and Kevin wanted something to do and I thought it would be a good idea. I'm not sold on an engine really needs to have inserted valve seats. These are Stellite seats, but it's a hell of a good idea. It's a good place to start. So we went ahead and put all these seats in. The neat thing about this Rottler machine is, is I can get every one of them exactly the same height and it really makes it nice. So then the next thing to do is sleeve the block. And we came up with a really pretty neat setup to do it with. We use our uh, press, but we hooked up a hydraulic pump to it. So you just stand there and press that sleeve in. This goop, I don't remember what it is. It's some white stuff that costs $100 a bottle. And if I could read the bottle, I'd tell you what it is. But it's to put sleeves in and seats in and all that kind of stuff. And it really gives a great thermal bond from the sleeve to the block and it works great for sliding them together. And yes, we do freeze the sleeves. And then when you use this uh, hydraulic press, they just go in so nice and sanitary. The only bummer is I gotta take two strokes. The press doesn't have a long enough stroke to do it all in one shot. Since the cylinder sleeves stick up above the top deck of the block a little bit, the first thing he's got to do after that is go over there and cut the tops of these off. Because if you try to do it with the, the surfacing, 14 inch surfacing tool, it knocks a chip out of them. We tried that, it didn't work. So we've got to go in there with a boring bar, cut these things down, make everything flat, and then we can surface the top of the block. It works out really nice. And of course, at this same step, we go ahead and do the boring operation. Speed and feed is everything when you're surfacing. And since we run copper clad gaskets for the most part, we put a pretty fine cut on them. I really hate that we have to take a, an engine out of a machine, do something else to it, then put it back into a machine, but it's just the way it is. This is a Rottler a machine that does the valves, a concentric machine, SG80M. And what's so nice about this machine is it cuts all the valve seats. And you just do the three angles or whatever the valve calls for, whether intake or exhaust, 
and you go in there and cut that. Now any valve can go in any hole. And if I was just to have one machine in my engine machine shop, it would be this one because I think this is where the engines take the longest to break in. And if you're using stones and a, and a drill cutter or whatever, it just takes that much longer for these valves to seat in. Whereas if you have a Surti machine or one of these rottlers, you can cut those valve seats perfect. We found that within 10 pulls on the dyno, it is what it is. There's no more horsepower to be gained unless you do tuning on top of it. So this machine and the breathing of these engines is where it's at. It does a fantastic job. And you can test every one of them with this really neat vacuum setup. So we know that everything is right before we ever even leave this machine. Unfortunately, I missed a lot of film in this whole thing, and I must have been out doing something critically important for the success of our company, and I didn't get any honing film of the Model A block, but uh, honing is honing, and uh, this is an Auburn 12 block in here. It's all pretty much the same thing. It's all in the setup and making sure you get the right crosshatch pattern for whatever rings you're gonna run, and the cylinder is straight and round and perpendicular to the crankshaft, and life is good. Even if the valves are new, we always go in here and we face the valves no matter what it is we do. And this machine is set up so nice, it does a perfect job. One thing about these Model A blocks that's kind of a bummer is adjusting the valves. Now these new tappets are really nice because you don't have that lock nut involved. But the bummer is, is that they drop below the boss in the block. So we said, why don't we just machine that off about 200,000 and make our life easy and it worked out great. We test all our valve springs, although we're not building race engines that are going to be turning 8, 9, 10 grand. You know, we're turning 2,500 RPM. But it is kind of nice to make sure that all your valve springs are okay, they're not weak, and they all kind of fall within a certain parameter. So yes, we do check them all. Now since I went with inserted rods and mains i went with the new rods with inserts and i went with the inserts that go in the mains we have to put these thrust washers in here and the design is a three-piece setup there's a double thrust washer top and bottom in the block and the cap in the back and then they just put one in the block side in the front it's their design works great i can say one thing about this setup this is the only model a that i've had in a long long time it does not leak one drop of oil and it's got the original slinger set up in the back and it works just absolutely perfect and once again i should have had film of rods but i really don't because i think i was out doing something important again we love this old ta14 tobin arp line boring machine to do our line boring work the table underneath the block cost 6300 dollars the line boring machine was like 900 bucks, but we can do stuff just as accurate as we can on our F79A Rottler, and it's faster, and it works just fantastic. And I can say this is no big deal as boring the block out for the insert mains. The hardest part was is setting up the rear main cap with these studs and doing the, they want these pins on there to align it. Okay, great. And then doing the cutting for the thrust washer, I had to make a special tool for it. But other than that, it was just run of the mill stuff. Then over to the uh, right angle attachment on the bridge port to cut the tang slots in the caps. And of course, you know, those slots are just mainly for assembly. When the cap comes down and gets bolted to the block, the bearing is held in place by crush. Uh, these are just alignment things, so it's nothing terribly critical. I've heard that some people don't even bother balancing these Model A's because the flywheel has got so much inertia that it doesn't really matter. But we have the machine, we've got Kevin, why not? 
He's got this thing balanced down to about six tenths of a gram. We always try to stab five, six tenths or less. We've had some of them where we get them down to one tenth of a gram. Way overkill for this, for sure. But I will say this, it really makes it nice because this engine just idles beautifully when everything is balanced. And here he's got the flywheel up there. What's the hardest part about this was lifting the damn thing up there, but it was pretty far out. It was about seven grams out. And so we took it down to about three tenths of a gram. And I think it makes a difference. Why not? You see the RPM? Yeah, it's gaining. It adds up to 511. For the heart of the engine, the oil pump. And I read a lot about Model A oil pumps and all the modifications that you can do to double the amount of flow out of them and all of this kind of thing. I suppose it's cool stuff, but I don't know how necessary it is. I think the Model A pump, and as a matter of fact, most of these old car engines put out plenty of volume. You might have a pressure problem, but volume doesn't seem to be a problem. I've never heard of a Model A starving for oil when everything was set up right. And so, yeah, we bought new gears, new shafts, new bushings, and all of that, but we had to make sure that everything was right. And sure enough, we had about 7,000 clearance between the cap and the body and where the, the gears are. So we had to machine off the top of the pump to get that down to about 3,000s, and then we put a 2,000s gasket in there. Um, that's probably max. I'd rather see it around two to three thousands. So um, if you could get it down to where those gears are almost just right level with the top of the, the pump and then put a two thousands gasket in there, you're good. But if you get that too tight, we had a Packard in here, oil pump seized up because of that. They didn't have enough clearance. Took out the camshaft. The book calls for just what seems to me a huge number of clearance between the tappet and the valve on these things and I think it was like 15 thou on the exhaust or something like that. We tightened it up a couple thou and this engine really runs nice so I think it was a good, good call. Of course when we're machining all this stuff like line boring and doing the rods and grinding the crank we use micrometers just like everybody else. And we use uh, inside mics and we double check all that stuff with outside mics and yeah, it's all well and good. But we always run plastic gauge in there just to make sure that we have a nice even cut all the way across the bearing. And one thing I learned one time is make sure you use fresh plastic gauge. I didn't one time and um, I dented the Babbitt. I bought all my parts for this engine and pretty much for the whole car from Steve at Burt's Model A in Denver. And um, they run a Hastings ring. We love it. They're wide. They're cast iron. Works good. Um, and the, the pistons, same thing. I have no idea who made these pistons, but they were on size and they were well machined and they balanced up really easily. So I'd say they're a good quality product. So putting it together is really a snap. But once again... I think I was out doing some important work and I really didn't get much film of assembling this engine. Shame on me. Somewhere down there, I know there's some car parts and I'm gonna find them. And we don't get to build very many engines like a Model A, and part of its attraction was it was so simple. And it is. You can put it together in virtually any order that you want. 
Uh, we normally put the cam in, do the valves, then we put the crank in, then we put the rods and pistons in, and then we put the oil pump in, and then we just start buttoning it up on the outside. It's really very straightforward. So um, not a lot of excitement here. Uh, one of the things that was the hardest thing for me to come up with was the engine pan. I needed a pan that wasn't pitted, wasn't dinged up so bad that it needed a ton of body work, and I wanted all the original detail in it, the press marks and everything else, and uh, it was kind of pulling teeth. I went up to Burt's Model A for like five months straight looking for stuff, and I finally found a pan that was acceptable and looked original to me. So once I get all this stuff buttoned up on the outside, it's time to put it on the hook and take it over and stab it in the chassis. So next time, we'll go through the chassis. It'll be really short. I'll probably combine it with the body. And I'll show you what I did to the body and the, and the bed to get it all in order. And we'll put this truck together and get it on the road.